Clave Solice reform spelling Clave Solouse pre-reform and Scottish Gaelic Irish pronunciation K L I V S L and Clave Solice variant spelling rendered sword of light or shining sword or a white glaive of light is a trope object that appears in a number of Irish and Scottish Gaelic folktales. The sword has been regarded as a legacy to the god slaying weapons of Irish mythology by certain scholars, such as T. F. O. Ray Hilly, the analogue in the Irish mythological cycle being Luff Sling that felled Balor, and their counterparts in heroic cycles are many, including the popular hero Cuchulain's supernatural spear Gae Bulga and his shining sword Cruiden Katuchen. A group of Sword of Light tales bear close resemblance in plot structure and detail to the Arthurian tale of Arthur and Gorligan. Overview The folk tales featuring the Cladeheve Solaus typically compels the hero to perform three sets of tasks, aided by helpers, who may be a servant woman, helpful animal companions, or some other supernatural being. The majority of are also bridal quests or involve the winning of husbands in e.g., Maol or Cleobane. The sword's keeper is usually a giant Gruagic, Firma or Hag Kalich, who oftentimes cannot be defeated except by some secret means. Thus the hero or helper may resort to the Sword of Light as the only effective weapon against this enemy. But often the sword is not enough, and the supernatural enemy has to be attacked on a single vulnerable spot on his body. The weak spot, moreover, may be an external soul concealed somewhere in the world at large inside animals, etc., and in the case of the young king of Esed Rua, this soul is encased within a nested series of animals. The crucial secret to the hero's success is typically revealed by a woman, i.e., his would-be bride or the damsel in distress the woman servant held captive by giants, etc. And even when the secret's revealant is an animal, she may in fact be a human transformed into beast e.g. the great grey cat in The Widow and Her Daughters. The secret about women is a theme born in the title. The Shining Sword and the Knowledge of the Cause of the One Story About Women. Considered an essential part of the original Irish story, I, according to G. L. Kittredge's stemmer of texts, even though the woman part is lacking, i.e., lost in some variants, such as Kennedy's Fio's Fath and Aon Seal, Perfect Narrative of the Unique Story, the News of the Death of Anshgaliacht which occurs as a quest in another version is also a corruption of this. This reconstruction was made by G. L. Kittredge, who examines a groups of Sword of Light folktales cognate to Arthur and Gorligan which he edited. A more familiar Arthurian tale which embeds the quest of, "'What is it that women most desire?' is the wedding of Sir Gawain and Dame Ragnell. Analysis Kittredge analyzes his group of Irish folk tales I, to consist of layers of elements, namely a frame story which binds the quest for the cause of the one story about women, with the werewolf's tale type. To this is attached the quest for the Sword of Light and a large interpolation he calls the defense of the child type tale. The defense of the child tale portion is in itself a composite according to Kittredge, composed of a faithful dog tale and what he calls are the hand and the child type tale. The latter tale has the motif of a grasping hand that seizes the victim, and gets cut off in some cases, akin to Grendel's arm in Beowulf. The Irish and Gaelic tales of this type exhibit the tale or motif of skillful companions, which was studied by Theodore Benfi and is known to be widespread all over the world. <laughs> Irish folk tales See under hashtag primary sources for bibliography of the compilations. Kittredge's Sigler are given in boldface. The story of the Scullager's son from Muskerry Seal VHIC Kennedy 1866, pp. 255 Fio's Fath and Aon Seal. 
Perfect Narrative of the Unique Story, Kennedy, 1866, pp. 266. Each tra air and skolog agus air and ingruagic rua, Adventure of the Skolog and the Red Gruagic. O'Brien 1889, Gaelic Journal 4, pp. 7 to 9, 26 to 28, 35 to 37. J. The Weaver's Son and the Giant of the White Hill. Curtin 1890, pp. 64 to 77. Here the Sword of Sharpness. The Thirteenth Son of the King of Erin. Curtin 1890, pp. 157 to 174. Moraha, Brian Moore, son of the High King of Erin, from the Well of Enchantments of Bin Eden. Lamini 1893, pp. 10 to 30. L. Simon and Margaret. Lamini 1893, pp. 130 to 138. Beauty of the World. Lamini 1893, pp. 155 to 167. The King Who Had Twelve Sons. Lamini 1893, pp. 196 to 210. Cud, Cad, and Macard. Curtin 1894, pp. 198 to 222. Cold Feet and Queen of Lonesome Island. Curtin 1894, pp. 242 261. Art and Balor Bamnech. Curtin 1894, pp. 312 334. C. 1. Small Head and the King's Sons. Jacobs 1894, pp. 80 96. No. 39. Curtin, Contrib. Hero Tales of Ireland. New York Sun. The Shining Sword and the Knowledge of the Cause of the One Story About Women. Ofahata 1897, pp. 477 to 92. ZCP1. The Snow, Crow, and the Blood. McManus 1900, pp. 151 to 174. This tale closely parallels another collected by Hyde entitled. Mac Rig Aaron, the King of Ireland's son, but in Hyde's version, the hero's party obtains the sword of the three edges. Cloidium N. A. Trifeobar. An untitled tale of Finn's three sons by the Queen of Italy, collected at Glenties in Donegal, Andrews, 1919, pp. 91. And Cladheve Solaus. O'Koikin 1927, Beloidias I, I 1927, pp. 277 to 282. Topic: Scottish Gaelic folktales. The publication of Tales from the Highlands, Campbell 1860. Popular tales of the West Highlands predate the Irish tales becoming available in print. The magic sword sometimes appearing under variant names such as the White Glaive of Light, Scottish Gaelic, and Cladheve Gil Solaus. The Young King of Essed Rua, Campbell 1860, Volume 1, pp.1, Number 1 Winking Face, Widow's Son, Campbell 1860, Volume 1, pp.47, Number 2, Second Variant Winking Face, Tale of Colonel Crovey, Campbell 1860, Volume 1, pp.125, Number 6, Tale of Connell, Campbell 1860, Volume 1, p.143, Number 7 Winking Face, Maol a Cleobane, Campbell 18 60, Volume 1, pp.251, Number 17 Winking Face, The Widow and Her Daughters, Campbell 1860, Volume 2, pp.265, Number 41, Second Variant Winking Face, Mac Ian de Reach, Campbell 1860, Volume 2, pp.328, Number 46, and Sionic, The Fox. Campbell 1860, Volume 2, pp.353, No. 46, Fourth Variant Winking Face, The History of Kitty Ill Pretz Bruford and MacDonald 1994, pp. 185–190, No. 21. Mythological interpretations <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> As a mythological sword. The assertion has been made that Cladhiv Solaus is a symbol of Ireland attributed in oral tradition to Cuchulain. MacKillop, although none of the tales listed above name Cuchulain as protagonist. T. F. O'Rahilly only went as far as to suggest that the sword of light in folk tales was a vestige of divine weapons and heroic weapons, such as Cuchulain's Cruiden Katuchin. This sword, aka Socked Sword, is said to have shone at night like a candle. According to a version of Ectre Cormaic, Adventures of Cormac Mac Ert. In O'Rahilly's schema, roughly speaking, the primeval divine weapon was a fiery and bright lightning weapon, most often conceived of as a throwing spear. In later traditions, the wielder would change from god to hero, and spear tended to be replaced by sword. From the heroic cycles, some prominent are Fergus Mac Roy's sword Caladbolg and Mac Checked Spear. But Caladbolg does not manifest as a blazing sword, and the latter which does emit fiery sparks is a spear, thus failing to fit the profile of a sword which shines. One example which does fit, is Cuchulain's sword Cruiden which was aforementioned. And the legacy of these mythological and heroic weapons survive in the "...sword of light." In folklore, in some circles, the Claytheev Solaus has literally been asserted to be the sword of Nuada Ergetlam, one of the four treasures of the Tuatha de Danon. This notion has become popular in Japan, where this information was disseminated by the fantasy-related mythology reference written by Nobuaki Takerub and derivative literature. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Connection to other swords. Unsurprisingly, some have seen parallels with this to Excalibur, due to some of the descriptions regarding how it shone. When Excalibur was first drawn, in the first battle testing King Arthur's sovereignty, its blade blinded his enemies. Thomas Mallory writes, "...then he drew his sword Excalibur, but it was so bright in his enemy's eye that it gaf light like thirty torches." Other commentators have equated the Sword of Light to the Grail Sword. Popular culture Fiction In fiction, Nuada's sword is to referred to as the Claim Solace, the Sword of Light Book of Conquests 1978, the Silver Arm 1981, and Erinsaga 1985 by artist Jim Fitzpatrick, where it is described as a Rune engraven sword. According to Takerub's reference book, Nuada wore a shining sword called the Claim Solace, phoneticized Klaus Solace, fiery sword, sword of light. The Claim Solace was a magic sword engraven with spells, and reputedly an undefeatable sword such that once unsheathed, no one could escape its blows. It also was one of the four treasures of Erin brought from the mystical Isle of Findias in the north. See also Lug Spear Lewin of Selcher Irish mythology in popular culture